Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at a tool that will make finding DOM XSS and prototype pollution much, much easier. DOM issues are still on the rise as front-end frameworks become increasingly powerful but also increasingly complex and more widely used. So with this tool we can quickly check for sources, sinks and gadgets to use to exploit our targets. Now, if you don't know exactly what those are, don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step. And by the end of the video, I'm sure you'll be running Dom Invader in your next web app pen test or against your next bug bounty target. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, what is Dom Invader exactly? Well, it's a browser extension that lets us easily see what information we pass from a source to a sync. And by source, we mean something that lets us pass user inputs. And a sync is a function that lets us execute code, famously the eval function. Having both of these can lead to DOM-based cross-site scripting. The tool also has some really handy features too that lets us easily find where these are. So we can continue with static analysis or code review if needed. And also in many cases, will simply let us exploit the target application using the plugin with the click of a button. We can use DOM Invader to find cross-site scripting, prototype pollution, and DOM clobbering. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, then we have an intro video to prototype pollution somewhere on the screen. And DOM clobbering is something that I'm sure we'll cover at some point in the future. But of course, you can always check out Port Swigger's Web Security Academy or other great resources to get started as well. But for now, let's take a stab at some labs using Dom Invader. All right, so here we are for our first lab and I have Burp Suite already open. So I'm just gonna come over to proxy, open browser, and here it opens a Chrome browser for us. Now, I'm just gonna paste in the address of the lab and we're gonna be doing DOM XSS in document.writesync using source location .search. And here, if you don't have these already on the toolbar, you can click the extensions and you can pin them and you should be able to see them. And then we're gonna come into here. Yours might be by default on the navigation recorder, which is super useful, but maybe a topic for another video. Come over to DOM Invader and switch DOM Invader on. And then all we need to do is reload the page. You can set a custom canary if you like, but this one that's randomly generated should be fine. After clicking reload, we can press Control Shift C to open the developer tools, and then we can come over to DOM Invader. So what we want to do is first here, we can inject into forms and then click search. And then here we can see that it's found a sync already. So it's found the document.write function. So if we want to inspect this a little bit more closely, which I think we do, we can come over here and click stack trace. And then here it tells us that we can open the console and see where this sync is. So just come over to console, click on here, and here we have our script. So just looking through this, we have a var equals query, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. So first up here on line 59, we're creating a new variable called query. And all we're doing here is the URL search params. This grabs the query string. So everything after the question mark, and then we're using the dot get function and passing in search to grab the value of the search parameter. So if we had something like search equals Jeremy, then the value of query would be Jeremy. And then of course, if query has a value, then we're calling the track search function and passing in this query. Here on line 57, we're using the document.write function, which writes strings of text to our page. And in this case, we're writing a load of HTML and then the query variable. So just remember that this is under our control and document.write is our sync. So we have our source, our input, which is the query parameter, and we have our sync, which is the document.write function. So if we come back to DOM Invader, we can have a look and let's see if this will just exploit it for us. And in this case, it looks like it's thrown in a payload, which is image source 
on error alert one, but looks like from the results here, we can see that we're actually stuck inside an HTML element. So maybe if we take the same payload and do something like this, we then get a pop-up. So a basic cross-site scripting escape. And whilst Dom Invader didn't get the exploitation parts of this, it pointed us in the right direction so that we could then further analyze the application we might look at how we can bypass filters and things like this, but it saved us from analyzing all of the front-end code and we get cross-site scripting. So this was a fairly trivial example and we might be able to easily spot this manually and exploit it, but with an application that has tens or hundreds of forms, for example, manual testing becomes really inefficient. So we need a tool that first points us in the right direction to parts of the application that need further testing. And that is something that Dom Invader can give us some direction by quickly finding sources and sinks for us to investigate rather than spending hours and hours trawling through functionality or front-end code. Next, let's take a look at a prototype pollution lab. All right, here we are at our next lab. And what we want to do is search for prototype pollution. So first up, we're gonna come into Dom Invader and then we're gonna come to attack types and we're gonna switch on prototype pollution. And of course, if you're looking for Dom clobbering, you need to switch this on as well. And we get this notification, in order for the change settings to take effect, you must reload your browser. So let's go ahead and do that. And then what we're going to do is once again, control shift C, and then we can click anywhere on the page just to get rid of the inspector highlights and then come over to Dom Invader. And interestingly enough, if I make this a little bit higher, we can see that it's found two sources already. So it's found prototype pollution, proto, property equals value in search, and then constructor, prototype, property equals value also in search. And there's no stack traces for this, but what we can do is we can go ahead and scan for gadgets. And this will take a minute and now it's complete. And it gives us an update and says, hey, Dom Invader found one sync via prototype pollution, which is great. So we now have a source and a sync. So once again, control shift C, come over to Dom Invader. And here we have this script. And once again, we can come over and check it out by clicking stack trace link, come over to the console, click on here. And here we have a slightly more complex piece of code. We won't run through it now, but if you want a little challenge, these snippets of code are really great practice for code review. And already we can see here, we're creating a script variable and then the script.source is using config.transport URL, which is probably being poisoned via prototype pollution or polluted by prototype pollution. And here we can see document.body.append child script. So this looks a little bit suspicious, but once again, we'd have to go in and review this and, and step through it. So if we come back to Dom Invader, hopefully this time it might give us a working exploit. And hey presto, easy as that. I've never seen prototype pollution so easy to find and exploit. And like I said, even if Dom Invader can't exploit this straight off the bat because there's some filtering or there's something that we need to bypass, just the fact that it can find sources and sinks so easily for us to target in our testing is a really, really powerful thing to have. So definitely something worth checking out. And congratulations we solved the lab. So that's it for this video. And if you still have questions, you can ask us live at one of our streams every Tuesday and Wednesday here on YouTube. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.